Now on BBC World News, Hard Talk asks tough questions in interviews with people shaping the news this week. Welcome to Hard Talk. I'm Stephen Sacker. Journalism in Turkey is a precarious business. Earlier this month, the country's biggest selling newspaper was forcibly taken over by the government. A host of journalists have been locked up for insulting the nation and its institutions or aiding terrorists. All this in a nation beset with diplomatic security and humanitarian challenges. My guest today is Sevgi Akacheshmi, editor of the English language Today's Zaman newspaper. Until, that is, the state booted her out. So how close is Turkey to authoritarian rule? Sevgi Akar Cheshmi in Brussels, welcome to Hard Talk. Thank you. Explain to me, first of all, why you are talking to me from Brussels when your life, your career, your job, they're all in Turkey. Even though officially I am still the editor-in-chief of uh, today's Zaman, I haven't been dismissed by the new administration that is handpicked by the government and installed in the newspaper. Um, I was concerned about my personal freedoms and safety in Turkey and I thought that it would be a wise decision to leave the country and make our voice heard around the world uh, from Brussels. So l l um, hang on, uh, let, let me stop you there. Let's get this straight then. When I just said you were essentially booted out of your job by the state, was I actually exaggerating? You could still be in your job, could you? Uh, not really, because the, as soon as the new administration took over by means of a, poli a brutal police raid on March 4, uh, they immediately sacked, dismissed uh, the editor-in-chief of Zaman, uh, along with the former editor-in-chief of Zaman, today's Zaman. Uh, but for some reason, I haven't received any notification of dismissal. Uh, it must be a matter of time, and uh, I personally would not prefer to uh, work with such an administration because as soon as they, uh, they started, took over, uh, they started to uh, implement censorship. Uh, they immediately, immediately removed critical columnists and they tried to, uh, they began to uh, censor news stories in the following days and I had asked them to re remove my name from the byline. So since the takeover, my name does not appear in the byline right. anymore. Right, but I mean, I don't mean this to sound uh, too judgmental, but, but wasn't it perhaps a bit cowardly of you to to leave uh, your job and walk away from a very difficult situation when you could have stayed and, and fought for your principles and for the independence of your newspaper? Uh, that's a very good question and I don't judge you for such a question. You are supposed to ask me difficult questions. Uh, but given the pattern uh, uh, in Turkey in terms of uh, what's happening to journalists in the last couple of years, uh, I don't see any reason why I should wait to be detained, imprisoned, or banned from traveling abroad uh, while there is no newspaper left. Uh, official, uh, technically, even though the newsroom uh, remains the same, uh, the, the newspaper has been controlled by other people, prepared by other, uh, other people, and they receive approval, approvals from higher authorities. Uh, in, uh, in any, for any story they run. So technically there is no newspaper to run for me anymore. I, I wonder, and, uh, you, I'm imagining you're in touch with uh, colleagues who are still at the paper. Not everybody's walked out. I mean, I've seen tweets from journalists suggesting that they've lost access to the internal ser servers, uh, email accounts have been closed. That's uh, true. You know, I was there. I was there during uh, all those happenings. I didn't leave until uh, the end of the weekend. And uh, I, was, I had to deal with the new administration, but I realized that uh, I don't, uh, these are not the p type of people that you could have a civilized communication with. Were there armed security personnel inside the newsroom? Uh, not inside the newsroom, but in the corridors right outside the newsroom. 
inside the building at the gates. Uh, uh, they did not even allow us to enter our with our own cars, and because the uh, building was cordoned by the riot police. So uh, unfortunately, even wh before I left, there were many people, uh, many policemen, and uh, my colleagues had to work under heavy police presence. And let me, by the way, going back to your previous questions, uh, question. Unfortunately, uh, higher uh, executives are under more risk, and I don't see any reason why I should wait to be in prison, but like just like John Lundar and others. Uh, I think I could fight a fight uh, when I'm free uh, and have a, 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 a sound mi mind. So uh, yeah, it yeah. doesn't mean that I quit my struggle. Uh, this is the best form of struggling, trying to make our uh, voice heard in the world. I wonder whether there's a, a certain amount of um, rhetoric uh, and hype going on here. I mean, you have said uh, that the decision squarely sits at the very top of the Turkish government. You've called Erdogan a despotic leader. Others in your newsroom, for example, Emre Sonjan, a Zaman journalist, he said this represents the end of democracy. I mean, is that, aren't you going a bit far? I mean, after all, the security forces moved in because there was a court order suggesting that the, there was legal permission for the state to take over the running of the Zaman newspaper group. But we have to look at the details of the court order. I have personally read the court order, and the, the court order, which, which is politically motivated clearly, because the courts are, especially those specific courts, uh, are clearly, uh, b b as seen in the other examples, as seen in the arrest of other journalists, are directly controlled by the, by the government, by the new regime. Uh, this court order accuses our newspaper of terrorist propaganda and yeah. links to a terrorist organization that does not even exist. So there is not a single evidence of terrorist or uh, 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 terrorist well, activity or terrorist propaganda. Well, so I, I I I do not consider that court order legitimate. I do not uh, consider that decision to take over our newspaper legitimate. I do not consider the, the, these trustees. Right. Uh, these trustees as the uh, rightful owners of the newspaper. They simply uh, took our newspaper away, fr uh, away from us, and this, this is the culmination of well, you, violation of media freedoms in Turkey. Yes, you can choose to uh, label the courts illegitimate in this case. I, I understand from your point of view why you're doing that, but the bottom line is you say, you know, there's no evidence whatsoever. They say, and I'm just reading now from... Uh, the court decision that there is, quote, a strong suspicion that the publications of Zaman are linked to terrorism and that this operation in your uh, newspaper is part of a number of ongoing investigations mm -hmm. on the what they call the FETO terrorist organization, which is essentially the Hizmet Gulen movement they're referring to, which they say is establishing a parallel structure apart from the state apparatus by use of force and violence. Uh, first of all, there is no such verdict that, that, uh, that confirms the existence of such a terrorist organization. These are only allegations. And in that court order and in anywhere else, they could not come up with any single story that does terrorist propaganda or that has links to, a, a, or that praises any terrorist activity. There is no links to terrorism in our newspaper, and there is no single evidence. Where, uh, they should, if they argue that they are taking over this uh, newspaper because of uh, links to terrorism, they have to come up with at least one evidence, right? All right, and, but yeah, uh, but I mean, I guess what this gets to is whether, uh, whether there is any grounds for calling the uh, Gulen movement a terrorist organization because there is no question is that I mean would you deny that your newspaper is in the pocket of the Gulen movement which for people who don't know the Turkish situation is a it's a, a deep-rooted religious social activist movement mm -hmm. run from mm -hmm. exile by Fethullah mm -hmm. Gulen mm -hmm. and your newspaper the group has been in the pocket of that organization for some time I would not say that it's in the pocket, but I would not deny that this newspaper, many people within the newspaper, not everyone, uh, including some of my editors in today's Zaman and some others in Zaman, uh, Zaman uh, but there are, uh, there, it's majority of the people would consider themselves 
sympathetic to, to Gülen and his, his peaceful teachings and inspired by the teachings of Gülen. And if Gülen uh, movement has any terrorist links, I think none of the uh, 170 countries in which it is active or it has activities from education to, uh, you know, uh, uh, charity organizations would not allow the existence of such an organization yeah, but, in their countries, would but, they? But, Sergei, if I may, you know, the outside world is looking at this, and of course, many people deeply concerned about what appears to be mm -hmm. uh, a repressive state moving into a, a, a media organization. But there is no way that if we dig into this story, we can portray your media organization as truly independent. You weren't independent. Mm -hmm. I, I use the phrase in the pocket of, but you were closely associated with the Gulen movement, which has become the biggest sort of political mm -hmm. enemy of the AK government in Turkey mm -hmm. today. So maybe it's not entirely surprising that you ran into trouble. Well, there are a, a couple of elements that I would like to answer in your question. That's a complex question. We would like to un understand the context. But I think what makes the uh, newspaper independent, uh, uh, what is critical when it comes to independence of a newspaper, is whether it's independent from government and state. Because uh, it doesn't make it, I mean, any, uh, uh, any civic society organization or any movement could want to promote its interest or try to have a say in the media sector anywhere in the world, it happens. It's not the first example. But I could issue, I don't know whether uh, there is no evidence that I uh, place in front of you, but I could assure you that uh, throughout my history in today's Zaman and Zaman, I have not received any single instruction from the movement or from Gülen himself, let, uh, let alone Gülen, I have not even received any instructions from the editor-in-chief, stacked editor-in-chief and former editor-in-chief of today, today's Zam Zaman and today's Zaman. I was uh, free to write whatever I felt like writing, but then again, of course, uh, I, I uh, think along the same lines, most uh, for the most part, along the same lines with the movement, because this is a peaceful, completely peaceful yeah. mo movement, and which, which promotes education, peaceful coexistence, and uh, you know, uh, y universal uh, values that uh, that uh, only p promote a, a more civilized world. Yeah, well, you, you, world. You, 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 know, you keep telling me the Gulen movement is entirely peaceful. You've said that yes, you and many of your associates in the newspaper were, you know, uh, attached to it, but you see nothing wrong with that. The bottom line is the government. Is, is there the government, evidence? The is government there says because, that all uh, over Turkey there is evidence that the Gulen movement is aiding and abetting terrorism and undermining what? the nation state. What, what, what is the evidence? What is there a single evidence, single incident that they could show, especially amid rising terrorism in Turkey? Uh, this is a country which has been truly suffering from terrorist organizations, uh, the PKK, ISIS, other attacks. Can you name me or show me any, any incident, even a s single small incident, mm. in which sympathizers of this movement have been involved in? Well, you, you cannot, oh, right. you cannot so, or the it, government cannot show me any, even a single incident. Because well, it's these not, it's people not, it, yeah, here's what I'm struck by as you protest your innocence and say this is a deep injustice. I'm, I'm struck by the phrase that they use in the United States and elsewhere, what goes around comes around. And that's really mm -hmm. what's happened to you. Because in the period, I've been looking back, in the period sort of 2009 to 2012, the Zaman newspaper group was incredibly loyal to Mr. Erdogan and the AKP mm -hmm. political mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. You know, in fact, you supported the AK when they moved against independent mm -hmm. journalists who were digging around mm -hmm. in stories that were not favorable both to AK and to the Gulen movement. You didn't mm -hmm. defend journalism then. You actually supported the locking up of journalists. So maybe uh, you're just reaping what you sowed. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's true, it was a mistake on Zaman's part not to support uh, freedom of expression and freedoms of journalists regardless of their political affiliation or, or their position. So uh, I am also critical of Zaman and his position at the time, but then again... Are you critical of uh, yourself? I, Are you critical? Would you not I was say... Not any, I, let, let me clarify. Oh. I was not part of Zaman newspaper at the time. No, I, was, I know you weren't, but you were actually for a short while actually working in the presidency of the country with an AK-affiliated president. So you no, were part of the system. No, it was not an AK-affiliated president. It was Mr. Gül and it was compared to Erdogan, Mr. Gül was 
uh, pretty impartial when, when it comes Mr. to... Mr. Gull was, was, was a close associate of Mr. Erdogan for a long mm -hmm. time. You were part of the system. At the time, mm -hmm. you were, it mm -hmm. seems, quite happy to see independent journalism uh, repressed if it suited the per party. But now you've decided, because you're a victim, that it's not good at all. Mm -hmm. Personally, you cannot uh, find any single uh, evidence that I was happy with the uh, imprisonment of journalists. But I admit that personally, and as a newspaper, the Man Group, we should have uh, stand, uh, mm. we should have uh, expressed our voice clearer. We should have been uh, more supportive of freedoms in Turkey, regardless uh, of who the victim is. But then again, you have to, uh, we have to look at the context in which uh, not only the Man Media Group. But everyone, including the European Union, liberals in Turkey, Kurds, uh, people from different walks of life supported Erdogan up until very recently, uh, pretty much until the uh, referendum, and uh, after which Erdogan became more and more corrupt. So I just, I just wonder, I mean, there's one particular case which sticks in my mind, the journalist uh, Ahmed Sheikh who mm -hmm. was locked up, I think, for pretty much yeah. a year between 2011 and 2012 because mm -hmm. he was digging around mm -hmm. on a story that didn't reflect well on the Gulen Foundation at the time. Now, Zaman didn't champion his cause, and when mm -hmm. he mm -hmm. saw that... You, he's obviously he's released now, and when he saw that your offices had been raided recently, he said, yeah, well, you know, I condemn the raid on Zaman, but I also remember mm -hmm. that Zaman in the recent past, mm -hmm. quote-unquote, served fascism. So, you know, there's a but real mixed message going on here. I, I think you are missing certain parts. I think you are looking at the story selectively. As I told you, it was a mistake not to defend rights of Ahmed Sheikh, Nedim Shenar, and other imprisoned journalists back then. Uh, and, but, but it wasn't only me. I, even before the crackdown, even before the government went after Zaman Media Group, the former editor-in-chief of Zaman personally said that it was a mistake, along with other uh, senior level columnists and executives who uh, did a, soul uh, a lot of soul searching and said that it was a mistake. By the way, uh, let me uh, clarify one point. Mm. Uh, you, you, should be, you, could be, uh, you would be wrong to assume that uh, these anything, uh, any violation of media freedoms uh, or rule of law happened without the instructions or permission of Erdogan. Uh, because Erdogan himself said that uh, books are books are more dangerous. Uh, th some books are more dangerous than bombs. And Ahmed Shuk uh, was a uh, before his imprisonment was not a well-known journalist. And there were many other uh, books that are defaming. You know, thousands of books maybe defaming the Gü Gülen movement. And one of the authors of this mo uh, this books. Hikmet Çetinka said that if they are locked uh, bec because they are critical of Gülen, it should have been me who has been critical of the movement for the last 40 oh, years. All right. So Th we could not simply we could not simply argue that uh, they are imprisoned because they are anti-Gülen. All right, let, let's, the, let's, let's look at the bigger picture now, because mm -hmm. uh, whatever the ins and outs of the relationship between the Turkish government and the Gülen movement, the bottom line for those of us who look at your country from outside is that it looks almost impossible today for any genuine independent reporting uh, to take place inside Turkey. This is not only about Zaman, his made movement and the government. Mm. This went well beyond this uh, because it's not only, even though Zaman is the largest portion that they were trying to swallow, uh, they, are gonna, they have been going after other critical media outlets as well. So we would be mistaken if we assume that this is a power struggle going on between a movement and, and, and the uh, regime in Turkey. How far do you think that this authoritarian strain of government can go? For example, mm -hmm. just a few days ago, Mr. Erdogan, after a decision to release two journalists from a, from a detention, uh, because they still remain charged of aiding and abetting terrorism, but they were released for a period of time. Mr. Erdogan said, if the Constitutional Court makes decisions like that, we're going to have to review whether the Constitutional Court should continue. <laughs> so, I mean, how far will he go with mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. determination to impose his authority mm -hmm. on every level of mm -hmm. the state? In self-criticism, again, I would never have imagined Erdogan and the AKP government come this far uh, when, a, a decade ago when they were implementing the unprecedented uh, EU reforms and democratizing the country. Uh, so it's pretty much like a U-turn, uh, and that's, that's one of the reasons 
uh, I would never, ha never have, n I would never have imagined Erdogan becoming this authoritarian. And after this point, uh, especially after uh, he is trying to distract attention from the corruption investigations in order not to be held accountable, I think he could go as far as he can. And at the moment, there is not a single power in the country, not any independent media institution, not a strong civil society, not a strong uh, opposition uh, to stop Erdogan. And the only institution that tried to stop uh, his violation of rule of laws was the constitutional court. And he said that he does not recognize uh, and respect the constitutional That's court's right. decision. Well, so it's the suspension of the constitution effectively. Uh, and uh, we are, that, that's why it would not be wrong to argue that, assume that we are uh, going through a civilian coup d'etat because the sus corruption, uh, the, the constitution has been suspended. A coup d'etat, you say, and yet there you sit in Brussels trying to publicize your cause, the cause of free freedom of expression, and yet at the very same time you're saying that to people in Brussels, the European Union is talking about speeding up the accession talks with Turkey, about visa-free travel and other little carrots to be given to the Turkish government, all because they need Turkey's cooperation in the migration crisis. They Do you think Europe is betraying its own principles in the way it's handling Turkey today? Uh, unfortunately, I have to say yes, with the exceptional individual politicians who are still committed to their values as an institution. Uh, from a general outlook, I think the European Union does not live up to its values and for example when Merkel uh, visited Anka uh, visited Istanbul yes he didn't she didn't uh, visit the uh, conspicuous palace of Erdogan probably in protest to uh, that that place uh, because it's a controversial palace but instead uh, Erdogan hosted him, uh, hosted her in one of the Ottoman palaces in a very symbolic mi move and used Merkel's well. vi visits to uh, uh, to save his face in, uh, among his domestic you know supporters mm, so well, unfortunately european leaders are giving erdogan opportunities in golden plates right a golden plate you sound very disappointed with europe here's a final question for you about your own personal fate you've described him as a dictator you've said that repression knows no bounds you've talked about a coup d'etat in your own country the way you've talked to me on air today suggests to me that you don't think you can possibly go home, that it would be presumably too dangerous for you to go back to mm -hmm. Turkey. Is that the way you feel? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, let me clarify, I haven't called him a dictator, but, but the de despot, because the word, okay. the first D word is very dangerous in Turkey, and I think I am still, sub I am still subjecting myself to self-censorship in that <laughs> respect. Uh, but um, I have already been uh, imprisoned, imprisoned uh, because of my tweets, uh, and the comment left under my tweet, uh, but it, the case was, uh, I was uh, sued by Prime Minister Ahmed Davutoglu, and uh, believe it or not, uh, the prosecutor added my, uh, if somebody else's comment left under my tweet, combined it with my No, I know. Tweet so you, you, already, you already have had uh, clashes with the law. You've already been convicted of crimes. So will you ever go home? Or do you now feel that you are going to, as long as the AK government is in place, are you in exile? Oh, I could say that Erdogan regime has changed my life in, in three hours. Uh, I love my country. It's the place I was born and raised. I am completely loyal to you know, uh, my home country. Uh, but at the moment, uh, it's not specific to me. Uh, journalism, any, almost any critical journalist is under jeopardy in Turkey. Our freedoms are under jeopardy. So I don't see any reason why I should go back under these circumstances. But then again, I truly have no other plans. I really don't know what I'm going to do next. Uh, I will continue doing journalism. Maybe we might try to revive today's Zaman uh, as a news website with some other you know, uh, uh, colleagues. But everything is so vague at the moment because uh, uh, it's a trauma. Uh, at the moment, there are people in the newsroom who are, uh, you know, uh, who are not trying not to resign in order not to lose their legal rights. Uh, but they are not happy to work under uh, heavy police presence and under censorship. Well, we, we have to end there. But Sevgi Akacheshme, I thank you very much for being on Hard Talk. Thank you for having me.